So I'll move back to the Reddit question. Uh, Lettuce Chill had one more question and basically was asking, what is coming after Ouroboros Genesis? So we have a, a new protocol that uh, we completed recently. Uh, it's called Ouroboros Kronos and is building directly on the Ouroboros Genesis work. So Ouroboros Kronos is uh, a, um, a new generation of the protocol that we're going to be publicly releasing in the next uh, couple of months. Um, the uh, problem that we are tackling in Ouroboros Kronos is uh, that that has to do with the time information which is available to the participants. Now, if you look at um, proof of stake blockchain protocols um, like Ouroboros and others before uh, that have been proposed, they use the time information uh, that is available to the clients in a non-trivial way as a way to determine how do you extend the blockchain. So a very natural open question is whether it is possible to design a proof of stake blockchain protocol that has as little time dependency as possible. And when I say time dependency, I'm referring to access to what is the right time. Now, the problem here is that in a decentralized environment, having access to the right time uh, might be a quite challenging, uh, uh, might be a quite challenging target. Uh, how do you determine what is the current time? So the work that we've um, undertaken in uh, the Ouroboros Kronos construction uh, and proof of stake blockchain is that tries to eliminate the assumption for having access to a global clock and uh, at the same time shows how is it possible to create a proof of stake based global clock that can be used as a global time reference point for other protocols that can be built on top of that. So uh, this is basically achieved by having the nodes that participate in the protocol using a blockchain way for maintaining and adjusting a joint clock that we prove uh, it can be assured that it is within a particular small time window. So in other words, it's not possible for an attacker to cause the nodes to become sort of desynchronized with that clock. So um, I'm very excited about this paper actually because it shows that we can have a much more resilient way to build a global clock protocol. And uh, I anticipate also that such a type of work can have other applications in higher level protocols that would like to have access to a robust clock. Uh, that could now be provided by the protocol. So here's an example, let's say that uh, you can have a, pro a blockchain protocol like the Ouroboros Kronos protocol providing clock services or timing services to protocols that are being built on top of it. Well, that's pretty amazing because um, I've been, been working with time sensitive applications for quite some time. And when you have time sensitive applications, keeping the clocks synchronized has always been very important because if they go out of sync, then some nodes begin to fail or they don't respond correctly. Um, so that's interesting that you're solving that problem. And one question to kind of piggyback on top of that question from Lettuce Chill, the various versions of Ouroboros Genesis, what's coming afterwards. Something I was curious about is like the next version of Ouroboros that we're going to is Ouroboros BFT, then Ouroboros Genesis, uh, then eventually Kronos and Hydra. Do these different versions of Ouroboros do they build upon each other as as the new ones come out? Like, will Orboros Kronos eventually, when that comes out, will it contain properties from the previous versions of Orboros, or is it a whole new implementation? Yes, thanks for asking this because uh, I, I understand there are people that uh, you know asking the question: How does the different versions of the protocol compare to each other? So basically what happens is that Kronos is building on top of Genesis. So um, you can think of Kronos as a, an extension of the Ouroboros Genesis protocol that uh, provides this clock capability. Now, uh, in the Ouroboros Genesis protocol, for instance, the clock was assumed. So it was possible, uh, the protocol was described in a setting where the participants of the protocol had access to time. And, and now this is removed uh, in the case of Ouroboros Kronos. But Ouroboros Kronos 
incorporates all the features uh, that um, were present, let's say, in the Ouroboros Genesis protocol. So it's a protocol that basically uh, built on top of that previous work. At the same time, I should maybe I can add to that, uh, that there might be cases where uh, you believe that you have access to goods uh, to, to a global time. And in that case, you may not want to deploy Ouroboros Kronos um, because uh, deploying Ouroboros Kronos, of course, means that there should be additional uh, logic, protocol logic that needs to be um, implemented. And even though there is not a significant uh, footprint, still the protocol has to send additional messages that will facilitate the synchronization. So like in every case, uh, we need to have a, a good understanding of the problem and the deployment setting that a certain blockchain protocol needs to um, operate, and then we can choose the right protocol. So basically what we're designing is that we're designing protocols that have the right set of features, but then in a specific deployment, uh, there is a completely different thinking that goes into about what features are relevant. So now you can ask, we have Ouroboros Kronos, and then another question could be, for instance, in Cardano, what would be the right protocol to implement? Right, and these are two separate questions. Uh, the one is dealing about basic protocol design questions, and the other is asking about a specific application, what features of the protocol, of the robust protocols are relevant and have to be implemented. I have a related question also. So in a lot of IOH case communications leading up to Shelley, uh, there's been mention about Orboros Genesis, but also of Prouse. And sometimes it's also called uh, Prouse plus Genesis. Uh, so can you can kind of clarify for our audience, uh, what does IOHK mean when they say Shelly will be prowess plus Genesis or Genesis or the different wordings they've used in the past? Yeah, so I, I guess this reflects the type of thinking I'm, I'm talking about. So we do have these protocols, Ouroboros Prowse, for instance, and Ouroboros Genesis. So Ouroboros Prowse dealt with uh, two main issues. The first one was about this adaptive attacks. So it dealt with attacks that uh, take advantage of information of the protocol execution, and they try to direct the attack adaptively based on that information. And it also dealt with issues of uh, partial synchrony of networks that uh, they are not operating in a synchronized fashion, as as in the case. Um, as in the case of the analysis of the Ouroboros protocol. So the first protocol. Now, going to the case of Genesis, we dealt with the problem of uh, taking a client that uh, would like to connect to the blockchain protocol, uh, to the instance of the blockchain protocol that is running, and the client would like to connect to the right blockchain so and not be confused let's say potentially by an attacker that would like to confuse a client and potentially connect to a wrong version of the distributed ledger so when uh, uh, at IOHK we sometimes have referred to prowse plus genesis is basically the process that says we have these features coming from Ouroboros prowse and Ouroboros genesis and we have the threat model that uh, we want to uh, uh, use uh, in the case of Cardano, and we are using all these protocols features from these protocols to get the right protocol instantiation. Because I have to say, going from the paper to the actual fully parameterized implementation, there's still a lot of engineering work that is needed. Uh, and there's a lot, lot of fine tuning that is necessary. So uh, basically, Prowse plus Genesis uh, would actually mean here that we take these features and we suitably parameterize them for uh, the application of particular deployment, let's say, in the context of the Cardano system. 